Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the magnetic property of complexes and this is an application of crystal field theory. If you remember in the last class we have done something called as spectrochemical series which is very very important. Why? Because if you have no idea about what is spectrochemical series it will be very difficult for you to solve this. Right. So once we know spectrochemical series and we know what is a weak field ligand and what is a strong field ligand, you could very easily solve the problems on the magnetic field. So I will attach the link for the same. Do watch that out first before this video. Let's get started. Now we will talk about solving the numerical and in that only we will run all the theory of magnetic properties. Okay, based on the CFT. Now here there are two examples. They look very similar, but they are different. Okay, let's see. Here you have Fe as your central metal and cyanide as the ligand. Okay, the number of cyanide here is six, which is an anionic ligand. All right. The second example, we are just comparing both of them. So here again, the central metal is same, but your ligand is different. Okay, the ligand, if you see the number of anionic ligand here and here is same. The overall charge on the complex is also the same. But what is the major difference over here? That is your ligand. So first you need to identify that. Okay. So if you talk about cyanide. Okay. We know that this is a strong field ligand. Okay. But the chloride over here is a weak field ligand. And therefore when you draw the CFT. Okay. Or vitals of this. The diagram of both of them will be a bit different. Okay. Apart from that, when you talk about tetrahedral or octahedral complexes, it is very clear from this that here you have six ligands, here also you have six ligands. So here one thing is clear that it is going to be an octahedral complex. So you need not worry about that. We will talk more in detail in valence bond theory okay, about octahedral and tetrahedral complexes, how to identify them. But for now, let's solve this example. So first hurdle is whether you know it is a strong field ligand or a weak field ligand. Okay. So that we have already passed through. Okay. Because we have determined the type of ligand. The second step is find the oxidation state of the central metal atom. Okay. Or the ion. So here you need to find out the oxidation state of Fe. Okay. So here if you check. Okay. You have this as minus 6. Okay. So Fe plus minus 6 okay which is equal to minus 3 that is the overall charge on the complex okay you know how to calculate this i have taken a separate video on calculating the oxidation state of the central metal atom if you want i will attach the link for the same now check so what is going to be the charge on fe it is going to be plus 3 okay so the charge on fe is plus 3 okay this is also similar so here the charge on fe is also going to be plus 3 is that clear Okay, so this I will remove now. So I repeat, the first step is identify the type of ligand. The second step is find out the oxidation state of the central metal atom. Now what about the third step? Third step is write down the electronic configuration. If you want, you can just write down the general electronic configuration. It is absolutely fine. Okay, so we are not writing down complete thing. But for Fe, at least you should know that it is 3d6 okay and it is 4s2 clear fine i repeat fe atomic number is 26 and the general electronic configuration you have argon 3d6 4s2 but for enough for now this is enough okay next the charge on fe is plus 3 that is it has donated it means it has donated three electrons so write down the electronic configuration for plus 3 state and how will that look like? You will remove electron from the s orbital first. So that gives you 4s0 and one electron from d orbital that gives you 3d5. So in short, you should know how many electrons you have in your d orbital to proceed. So we know that we have five electrons in d orbital. Why? The complex is having plus three charge. So this is the electronic configuration that we need. Okay, fine. So let's solve. Now, just draw the splitted orbital. You don't need to draw the entire, you know, degenerate orbital, then raised in energy, and then the splitted orbital. No, because you're solving, you have to be quick. Okay. So now what we will do is we have this 5D orbital, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So in general, what we are going to do, it is an octahedral complex. So in octahedral complex, you will have EG above and you will have T2G. 
okay so this is your t2g and this is your eg this is what you need to know okay next just fill the electrons okay so now while filling the electrons the number of electrons we know it is 5 this is your d orbital okay 3d orbital down and 2d orbital up so you can draw it as simple as this okay so 5 electrons 1 2 3 this is common for both of them okay i repeat this diagram till you is common for both of them where does the different arise difference arise it arises from here you said it is a strong field ligand right so if you remember we said in strong field ligand the fourth electron will start pairing up in t2g okay so this is fourth and this is the fifth one okay so here the configuration would be t 2g how many electrons you have all the five electrons in t2g and eg how many electrons you have zero is that clear this is for which one this is for case one okay but if you talk about case two let's draw a comparison of that okay so in case two what will happen in case two it is a weak field ligand and weak field ligand has high spin so the fourth electron will jump to eg and it is not going to pair in your t2g okay that is what you remember from the spectrochemical series application that i said okay so you have one two three okay this is fourth and this is fifth one okay so the electronic configuration for case two okay the electronic configuration for case two will be t2g okay three and eg2 is that clear now we are talking about magnetic property so let's talk about magnetism there are two types of magnetism that we are going to predict here that is whether the complex is diamagnetic or it is paramagnetic so if a complex has unpaired electron i repeat if a complex has unpaired electron then you will say it is paramagnetic so you can see in both the cases you can see there are unpaired electrons so both of them are paramagnetic so in this case since one unpaired electrons i'll write the complete thing okay let's not confuse since one unpaired electron present therefore it is paramagnetic okay so for magnetism for predicting the magnetism you should have an unpaired electron okay next one you are also this is a para magnetic complex but assume that all the electrons in t2g and eg are paired okay then you will say it is diamagnetic i repeat note we will take one more examples of that so don't worry about it so i hope this is very clear to all of you okay you have seen that the complex looked very similar but only because the ligands were different okay and they had different properties you got to completely different splitting of the octahedral complex okay and don't forget this this is how we write electronic configuration for splitting of octahedral complex okay so there was too many things to learn over here now what you will do is again write down the complex okay and try to solve it on your own clear now while solving the magnetic property of the complexes you can also predict the colored nature of the complexes that is it's the same concept but if you have unpaired electrons okay in the d orbital of course i repeat if you have unpaired electron in the d orbital then your complexes will be colored okay but if the unpaired electrons are absent okay the complex is going to be colorless so also remember the this concept along with your magnetic properties okay now let's make things more simpler for you so that you can solve all examples on octahedral or tetrahedral okay so have a look at this orbital diagram what i have taken is i have taken one column for strong fill ligand that is low spin complexes and the other one for weak fill ligand or high spin complexes now whenever you talk about electronic configuration oxidation state i know you all can do that okay so let's take in general example to solve this let's say you came across a complex which has d1 electron after oxidation state and after doing everything it has d1 okay one electron in d orbital and that is a strong field ligand 
okay so if it is a strong field ligand one electron will go here even if it is a weak field ligand one electron will go here so you can see there is absolutely no difference when there is only one electron in strong field or weak field ligands or complexes okay and you can see in both the cases because it has one unpaired electron they are going to be paramagnetic so this is for d1 so if you have d1 it is going to be paramagnetic is this clear for octahedral complexes we are talking about because this orbital diagram is for octahedral if it is tetrahedral you will have the eg down and t2g up you already know that okay so next let's talk about d2 so if you have two electrons whether it is strong field or weak field it makes no difference okay so even d2 is going to be paramagnetic in both the cases okay why because they look similar okay next if you have th three electrons okay whether it is strong field or weak field it really does not make a difference because you can see the orbital diagram is same okay so even d3 is going to be paramagnetic is this clear now let's talk about d4 now here the difference starts if it is a strong field again pair it pair all the electrons at the ground level and then go up okay so for d4 the electron will enter here okay still it has two unpaired electrons so it is going to be paramagnetic so even d4 is paramagnetic because it has two unpaired electron in the other case okay the fourth electron will go to eg still it has four unpaired electrons okay therefore it is still going to be paramagnetic okay next d5 the fifth electron will again pair in t2g okay and there the fifth electron will go up so you can see that the electronic configuration is now changing for strong field and weak field okay based upon how many electrons you have in your d orbital and based upon which type of ligands you have okay so now this was still d5 okay and they both are paramagnetic but they have different electronic configuration the next one d6 the six electron will complete the t2g over here but when you go in that case the electron will start filling or pairing in t2g so you can see it is still different but they have unpaired electrons right so your d5 is paramagnetic d5 is paramagnetic but d6 in this case is diamagnetic why because there are no unpaired electrons but in this case if you see there are four unpaired electrons and therefore this is going to be again paramagnetic so d6 for weak field is paramagnetic okay next d7 that electron will go in eg okay your d7 will go in t2g okay so you have unpaired electron in both the cases so they are going to be paramagnetic okay next d8 again two unpaired electrons so that is going to be paramagnetic okay over here d8 is going to be paramagnetic because three unpaired electrons present next d9 okay so for d9 the electron will go over here okay and for d9 the electron will go over here okay sorry six seven eight nine is this clear fine so i think i missed something so six seven eight okay six seven eight so one thing that you can notice over here that when you had eight electron okay both of them both the orbital diagram is still looking the same i repeat when you have eight electrons both the orbital diagram is still looking the same okay but they are paramagnetic okay so d8 is paramagnetic d8 is paramagnetic next d9 both of them will again have same orbital diagram but because they have one unpaired electron they are going to be paramagnetic sorry they are going to be paramagnetic in this other one they are still paramagnetic d10 you can see that your t2g and eg is 100 percent full okay so in that case if you see d10 over here is diamagnetic okay and d10 over here is going to be diamagnetic is that clear fine so this is what you need to remember when you solve the molecular orbital diagram or the cft orbital diagram for the complexes based upon your strong field and weak field ligand so i hope this was very clear to all of you okay now what you will do i have solved for octahedral complexes 
you will make a general diagram like this okay that is strong field and weak field for tetrahedral complexes and try filling the electrons and find out which of them is going to be paramagnetic or which of them is going to be diamagnetic apart from that what you can do is you can also write down okay while filling the electrons which orbital look alike okay that is d1 d2 d3 and which orbital look different okay fine so i hope this was clear to all of you see you soon in the next class thank you Thank you.